right, good morning. Thank you so much for everybody that was able to uh, attend this meeting today. And for those of you that are watching online, we're glad to have you this morning. This is the March 28th regular commission meeting. Now, we're going to start off. We have the honor of having Pastor Larry Peterson here with New Hope Assembly of God to uh, lead us in an invocation. If you'll rise with us as he comes and leads us in prayer, and then we'll ask Commissioner Cole to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance before we get started. Good morning. Thank you so much for coming, Pastor. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord God, we just thank you for this day, Lord. We thank you for all your many blessings. Dear Lord, I thank you for this group of individuals, dear Lord, who have been elected to <coughs> lead this county and serve this county. <clears throat> Lord, I pray now that you would just keep your hand upon them. You'd guide them, direct them in each and everything they do. Dear Lord, I pray you would be with this meeting, dear Lord, as, as they conduct this business. Lord, I pray that you would just guide them and direct them in your way. For us in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Pastor, thank you so much for being here today and praying over us in this meeting. Thank you, Commissioner Cole, for leading us in that pledge. I'm going to ask this morning before we get started uh, through the rest of the agenda, I'll start with my right with Commissioner Peach. Are there uh, any additions or modifications to today's agenda uh, that need to be changed? Uh, no changes, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Commissioner Cole. Mr. Chairman, not a change, but I, I was noticing on our February uh, budget hearing or a budget workshop that we had that uh, uh, county administrator done a real good job of, of what Commissioner Salter pointed out the other day, what we have done. So if that's still online, I uh, wish people would take a look at that and uh, maybe a good starting point for our workshops. Thank you. Commissioner Salter? No changes, Mr. Chairman. Roy? No, no changes. Mark? No changes, sir. All right. Gen I know Jane never adds nothing. Gentlemen? Anything, Roger? Yes, commissioners. There was a, a, an addition to the engineer's report. It's on the regular agenda, uh, and you see that there along with the backup, and that's relative to the uh, Miracle League. Thank you here. so much, Roger. All right, hearing no other changes, we'll go ahead and uh, move for approval of today's agenda. I will then ask if there's any objections to approving the minutes for the March 14th regular meeting. Hearing none, we'll approve those minutes. <clears throat> and then uh, next, we are, and I want to say before we get started, hopefully this will not be an issue, uh, but if for some reason we have not concluded the meeting uh, by about 9.40, I will have to leave today, and uh, Commissioner Salter will, will take the helm for the remainder of the meeting. Um, so we're going to start off with a presentation uh, uh, from Mr. Pete Gandy. He's a consultant that represents us on our uh, military affairs, and we, uh, we know that that is a cornerstone of uh, not only our citizenship makeup, but also our, our economic makeup here in, in Northwest Florida. So good morning. Thank you for being here. Good morning. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, what I want to talk to you about for a few minutes this morning is a, uh, a trip that uh, about 40 of us from the five northwest Florida counties took last week uh, going to Washington, D.C. as part of the Northwest Florida Defense uh, Coalition. Uh, we were there March 12th and 13th. This is something we've been doing annually uh, really for about the past 12 years. And uh, the reason that we uh, make that trip is to receive uh, updates from our congressional delegation leadership and also to receive uh, briefings and uh, information from uh, top Pentagon leaders that uh, talk to us on various, various subjects that are very important to us here in Northwest Florida. Uh, Tuesday, we started the meeting off and our host for this meeting was uh, Congressman Matt Gates. Uh, and the meeting was moderated by his military legislative assistant, Charles Truxell. And I want to say in the beginning uh, what, uh, how, how cordial uh, the congressman was to us. He uh, was very generous in making himself available both days to talk to our group and to answer questions. Uh, he started off uh, his presentation that morning talking about the uh, budget that had just been released the uh, prior day before on Monday, uh, the President's budget. 
he said he was still going through it, uh, looking to see if there was any positive or negative impact to uh, our missions here in Northwest Florida. He went on to say that he felt the uh, military construction projects that have already been approved for uh, both Whiting Field, that's the new tower at Northfield, and also for Eglin, which are all the enhancements that are being made for the Gulf Range uh, over on the west coast of Florida. He thought those were uh, uh, solid, uh, that they would be protected in this budget, and uh, said that would be good news for us. He also added something I thought was an interesting comment. He said since the House leadership has changed, he said he feels that that is probably uh, uh, going to benefit us uh, here in northwest Florida for protection of the uh, military test range in the, in the uh, uh, eastern Gulf uh, because uh, they will support, uh, he feels, the extension of the moratorium on oil and gas drilling uh, in, in that test range, which is critical for that test range to be effective. Uh, we had a number of panel, panels that he had uh, put together to talk to us. Uh, the one I really want to focus on uh, <coughs> is on page two, and it was the final panel of the day. And it focused on next generation aircraft and hypersonics. Um, the panel consisted of uh, uh, a gentleman from Lockheed Aerospace, uh, who's one of the leads on the development of this program. And then uh, also we had uh, two think, uh, think tank uh, representatives that were there. They cited the fact the U.S. is behind uh, currently the Soviet Union, Soviet Union, Russia, uh, and China uh, in this technology. Uh, they have been pursuing it faster than we have. Uh, <clears throat> he stressed the importance for protecting that eastern Gulf test and training range. Uh, because that's where this testing is going to be uh, conducted. Uh, the takeaway uh, from, th from this, uh, this panel was that Eglin and the Gulf Range will play a crucial role in development and testing of this new technology. You may recall about a month or so ago, uh, President Putin from Russia was uh, proclaiming he has a new weapon system that can strike any target uh, on, in, around the world in a matter of minutes. What he was talking about is hypersonic weapons and aircraft. Uh, they've been working on this a lot longer than we have. Um, once we had concluded that uh, first day's meeting, uh, Dan Shebler and I uh, went over to the Senate Armed Services uh, building and uh, to meet with the chief of staff uh, for uh, for the uh, chairman of the Senate Armed Services Committee, Jim Inhoff. The uh, purpose of that meeting was to discuss the Defense Community Infrastructure Pilot Program that's been authorized by Congress but is yet to be funded. The program is designed to help with infrastructure projects uh, such as running a wastewater line from NAS Whiting Field. Uh, which is something that uh, we'd like to be able to do, and we're looking for grant money to help us in that, in that effort. This program is uh, funded annually at around $20 million, and Mr. Holland, we got his okay to push that program and support it with uh, Chairman Enhoff, which would be uh, very important uh, to get this program funded. The next day, uh, we had a representative, <coughs> Colonel uh, Colin Tucker is with the Air Force. He's military deputy assistant secretary for the Air Force for Science, Technology, and Engineering. Again, he talked to us about hypersonics. Uh, this is aircraft that uh, has capability to fly between uh, Mach 7 and Mach 20, which is really fast. Uh, so he went into some detail about uh, the type of aircraft that could carry these, this new uh, weapon system. And he specifically addressed the F-35 and the F-22s. He feels this program will draw more private investment to the panhandle. And the takeaway is that knowing this, our economic development managers need to target specific companies 
who will be involved in the manufacture uh, of this new technology and work to attract them to this part of Florida. The, uh, our second speaker of the day was James Balaki, he's Deputy, Deputy Assistant Secretary of the Navy for Installations and Facilities. Uh, he began his presentation and spent most of it talking about the land swap here in Santa Rosa County uh, for Site 8 uh, over in Escambia. He s uh, said that this is how the Navy needs to work with local communities uh, that would benefit both the Navy and economic development locally. Um, and then uh, really we, we had about four or five other speakers that talked to us on a number of a number of uh, programs and topics. Again, a lot of it focused back on hypersonics. This is the new, the new technology that's coming into the inventory. And it's going to be very important for us here in Northwest Florida. I guess to summarize uh, the fly-in, the event is pretty much Eglin focused every year, as it has been and probably should, because it's the largest facility uh, here in Northwest Florida, and a lot of the other bases are tied to the Eglin mission. Uh, <clears throat> I don't feel that from my discussions and from what we heard in Washington that uh, Whitingfield is in any jeopardy at this time from a BRAC or for a stealth under the radar BRAC. Uh, the missions are too important. The training mission, especially at Whiting, is critical. So, and we've done a lot, the county and the Navy working together to protect that base from encroachment. So that's the good news. Um, Dan and I talked on the way back that in addition to supporting the annual trip each year, we probably need to give consideration on an as-needed basis for a private side trip up to Washington to deal with whiting specific issues as, as they may arise. Um, again, the Navy pointed out while we were there that Santa Rosa, Rosa County's encroachment prevention program continues to be referred to as the Santa Rosa model and uh, it has served us well thanks to uh, the foresight of this board in supporting that. And with that, I'll be happy to take any questions you might have. Mr. Gandy, thank you so much. <clears throat> Again, not just for representing our community and our interests, but for being here today and giving us that brief. I would ask if any of my fellow commissioners have any questions. Mr. Gandy, Commissioner Peach. Uh, so. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just one, Mr. Gandy. Did they mention the F-22 at all in, in Eglin, or uh, I see the F-35s are going to They did. Tindall. The uh, F-22s are uh, probably going to move permanently out of, out of uh, Tyndall. But uh, that's the reason for putting three squadrons of F-35s to backfill it. Uh, and that's going to be over time as they get that base rebuilt. They're estimating the cost on the rebuild at, at uh, Tyndall may be between three and four billion dollars. Thank you. Commissioner Cole. Uh, well, glad you brought that up because uh, so that they have solidified that they are going to rebuild Tyndall because there's a vicious rumor out there that they may just decide to close her down and move move those squadrons to another location. So that that was that was never indicated while we were there. As a matter of fact, to the contrary, everybody we talked to, including uh, Congressman Gates. Uh, were strong supporters and felt very confident that Tyndall is going to be rebuilt. Okay. And I know it's 100 miles down the road from us, but anything that happens in Northwest Florida, I think, affects all of us. So. It does. Yeah. Thank you. Commissioner Salter. Mr. Chairman, as always, thanks, Pete. <clears throat> Yesterday at our Military Affairs Committee meeting, we had a wonderful guest speaker. What was his name, Pete? It was uh, Butch, uh, excuse me, Beach Wilcox. Yeah. And he's an expert in hypersonics. And it's interesting all the work that's going on and the importance of being able to be competitive throughout the world. And a lot of that's happening right here at Eglin Air Force Base. It's just an amazing story. Uh, I made a comment at the end. I said, I'm not sure if I can sleep better tonight or not, knowing everything <laughs> that's going on. So, But it is interesting. So thank you. It's my pleasure. Again, thank you, Pete, for uh, what you do for this community 
and uh, we appreciate you coming today to provide this update not only to the board but also for the folks that are able to attend the meeting well thank you for allowing me to do it have a great day we will move on to our consent agenda I will ask at this time if there are any objections from my fellow commissioners or from the public uh, in approving the consent agenda hearing none with we will move the consent agenda for approval next that takes us to the regular agenda uh, there are no items under the economic development committee so we will move on to the administrative committee item number one we have six event requests uh, this was left on the regular agenda because we had uh, one add-on from monday which was item number six for the florida okinawa uh, kajimahu uh, apologize if i butchered that there um, anyway i would ask if there are any commissioners or members that are here today uh, that would have any reason to object moving all six of these event requests for approval hearing none those items are approved item number two is the ice vending machine uh, this is a discussion of approval of a request from blue angel ice company llc to place a freestanding ice vending machine on the navarre pier i believe we are fortunate enough to have representatives from that company here today uh, thank you for being here and please if you will just come up to the podium and state your name and address for the record Hi, I'm Elise Drinkard, uh, my husband Bob. We're representing Blue Angel Ice today because our managing partner, Downing Gray, is out of town. Um, Mr. Gray and I basically approached the county staff along with Commissioner Peach with the possibility of putting one of our ice vending machines not on the pier, but actually in location to the pier, which I believe y'all have a copy of. Um, it's in the parking lot, actually across the parking lot from right. the pier. It's not right there at the pier. We currently have three machines already in Santa Rosa County, all three of them located in convenience store parking lots, where those convenience stores continue to sell ice out of their ice merchandisers. Um, just wanted to point out that our machines will give those people who want bulk ice or looking for a better value as opposed to a 10 pound bag we have 16 pound bags and 20 pound bulk um, we found that with our locations on beaches at Pensacola and Perdido Key that this is a wonderful service to the patrons of the beaches and just wanted to answer any questions or is there anything you wanted to add Mr. Chairman Commissioner Cole uh, I don't really have a question but I'm going to move to deny this right now until we go through some of the talks that we mentioned on Monday as far as knowing if you know we put this out to bid or if we requested other input and also I've been contacted from the uh, beach manager that they'd be interested in you know looking at this because it would tap in you know it's basically one of the items that they use as part of their uh, business plan so uh, I've got too many questions to, that haven't been answered from Monday that before I'd feel comfortable approving this. Thank you, Commissioner Cole. Commissioner Salt. Mr. Chairman, <clears throat> I'm very familiar with this company. Mm -hmm. uh, they have a ice machine at Five Points. We do. Oh, my wife loves it. Y'all keep it very professional. Y'all keep it very clean. And I'm going to support it today, but I just want to let y'all know y'all doing a good job. Thank, Thank you. you. Mr. Peach, any, any comment? Um, I, I met with these folks. I was part of the meetings they had with staff um, a month or so ago, um, and we gave them the, the maps of what we're planning to do to the area with the walkway that Stevens folks are putting in and things. Um, I, I mean, I saw their proposal, you know, for the 5%. Um, I think this proposal is just to approve the concept and then work on the siting. I mean, the siting that's there, you know, we'll tweak it with, with engineering and things. I don't know how many other ice companies are out there with proposals. I mean, how is the county, you know, as a new guy, I'm going to ask, is, is it standard for the county to go out for proposals on these? And what would be the timeline on that? Because we are screaming up on the peak tourist season. So if we're going to go into a, a long term. 
Well, I'm not sure there's, uh, I think it is standard for the county to go out for requests for proposals if there is a, uh, uh, a request or an, a concept of utilizing county property. I know that one of the things that the board asked at the money meeting was for Dan to contact the uh, peer operator. He did so and Mr. Fountain responded saying, the, thank you for contacting me. We do provide and sell ice at the pier and for the yellow beach area of the parking lot and beach adjacent to the pier. One of our approved amendments was in fact to locate an ice machine on the beach area so we would oppose the location of a competing ice vendor on or adjacent to the pier and beach area. If you feel that a need is not being met then I would certainly request that we meet to review any such proposals prior to their consideration. So. Um, I mean, that's, that's from Mr. Fountain, who is the uh, peer operator. Um, if the board wanted to request proposals, then we could do that and have a fairly quick turnaround. Oh. Go ahead. I, I'll just comment. I, I feel like, um, you know, I, I worked over a year. I, I don't know how much y'all follow. You may be like my wife. She doesn't. Uh, you know, watch many of the meetings, but worked well over a year sort of behind the scenes, for lack of a better term, with uh, YMCA and their executive director to, to work out, kind of like you had with Commissioner Peach, some of the details to bring that uh, project sort of to a point where we presented it to the board. And one thing through that process that uh, our attorney and Dan had, had noticed as well is um, it was an unsolicited proposal. I think the same thing you consider Correct. here where you come to us with an offer. Um, and, and I think, uh, I'm like Commissioner Salter, I, I love these machines. I actually almost purchased one, went up there and toured the factory years ago, but I found out there's some, obviously some area franchising issues and, and a lot of the good spots are taken. But uh, anyhow, even with that YMCA, I believe we were told that we had to go out uh, <clears throat> for sort of a, lack of a better term, Roy may correct me, but a bid term to see if there was anyone else that wanted to match or supersede um, the, the unsolicited proposal that YMCA was doing to, to provide, you know, those uh, things, even though it was very unique. And I know, especially Twice the Ice is a company that, you know, produces them. And, and I know that uh, areas are strictly regulated, so I don't see that you would have a competing person on that company per se, but I do think it would be prudent and, and I want you to know that uh, I am uh, very supportive of the service that y'all provide throughout the county. Uh, I actually saw the one in Perdido. I was out there last weekend right there in the curve and utilized the machines. I'm a big fan of the concept. Uh, I just feel like to make a decision of, of the magnitude, which is, you know, leasing that property out that I do feel like it would be prudent to at least go through the process to see, hey, is there somebody else that could offer, uh, you know, comparable type product? And, and maybe they say, uh, and I haven't ran revenue schemes or put a lot of thought into this, but maybe they say, well, we could offer <clears throat> more than 5% or maybe 5% is already more than generous. But the fact that the group that had went in and, and uh, we went through a long process and even presentations to allow a group to, to operate that peer um, and they, you know, put in some financial consideration to do that. I do think it would at least be prudent to maybe have those discussions with them. Um, uh, you know, I would know that if I was doing it as a business, I probably, I don't think he, uh, from that letter, you know, I, I know he said there would be concern for competing. Uh, that's not to say that can't be talked out or maybe um, diminished, but I, I do think that we at least afford them that opportunity. I don't want to say to put you off uh, inevitably. I think that's something that our county staff, I know Dan had to travel for us today to Tallahassee, but I think that's something our county staff could do pretty expeditiously and get back with you. So I by no means am wanting to say, hey, I, I don't support you doing it. I think it would be overwhelmingly utilized oh, I uh, and I think it would be an asset. I just want to make sure that we're doing it appropriately uh, that would reflect upon, um, you know, any uh, you know, uh, even perception that we maybe yeah. didn't follow procedures that we have with, cool. with other type ventures. Well, the 5% that we proposed was proposed based on what we knew the norm was for that area. Okay. So we knew probably or potentially there could be some negotiation in that. Um, we were just following the norms. Okay. Commissioner Cole. Through the chair to county attorney. Roy, could these folks work through the existing peer management without coming back to, would, 
Well, Mr. Fountain have to come to the board if he said, hey, we're just going to. The area that they're talking about utilizing is not within the footprint of the existing um, lease to the, the peer operator. This property is not leased at this time. Sure. So um, uh, certainly they could, if the board requested proposals, they could, they could work with um, um, the peer operator or or make a proposal on their own okay back to the board. i just want to make sure they understood that door was open also because uh and, and if we take another whack at this thing as uh, chairman suggested i would think there should be a lease on the property a set amount plus plus the five percent not just straight five percent because in the winter time and stuff we're not going to you know, there's probably going to be less income, I, and I, I believe, if I'm correct me if I'm wrong, doesn't like Juana's and the 7-Eleven pay a lease payment plus a percentage? Um, the we have a, a minimum lease payment That's on pretty much all of our properties out there. Would this have that also, or was it just a straight? This 5%? was a five percent. I mean, we don't have the document. We don't have an agreement put together. It's a conceptual agreement exactly. at this time, but but um, we do have their proposal, which okay. was a, a percentage only. Thank you. I, and I want to ask you a question. And again, I, I wish I wish uh, we could have had these conversations, and Commissioner Peach could come to us ahead of time, and we don't have to have so many. But that that's the way it is. I, I was under the impression, based upon the aerial that it provided, that that was in front of the pier. What? area just so that I can make sure I'm, I'm clear where y'all asking to put this on is it on the south or I guess to be the north side of the road across from the pier over kind of where the boat runs the south is? side of the road but the north side of the parking lot right behind the restaurant basically okay uh, in it, that it, general area to the side of the restaurant yeah I, I want to I want to leave you uh, with these thoughts that that I uh, wholeheartedly again I, I utilize your product appreciate it I think it I think it would be an asset on the beach to have a, a bulk ice machine in the parking lot area I think a lot of people overwhelmingly would use it um, and so I am not against the concept at all I just think it would be prudent from things that I have saw dealing with different issues in the past than instead of just taking the first uh, you know unsolicited proposal that we at least go through uh, the process of saying hey we're gonna open this uh, I think 30 days would be plenty and you know if anybody else has a better proposal they could submit it uh, you could submit the same proposal or even one that was maybe a little more advantageous to the county and that way then this board could I, I could feel more confident about knowing we we followed this procedure so again I don't want you to think at all that I don't support it I just want to make sure that we're going through this proper practices like we have on other issues right. well obviously it takes a little bit of time to put it down so I appreciate the question on how quickly y'all could turn around the RFP um, about how long does it take you're on that side for getting it sort of the permitting oh, type uh, issues yeah and all. That, that once you approve it then we can start <clears> the, I, I would um it, it could take uh, <clears throat> at least a month uh, yeah. yeah so so i surely don't know uh know your time constraints or, or or business model but but i would just encourage you even from other presentations we've had before the board and again this is a public meeting so anybody's welcome uh but i would just encourage you from what i've seen on on different presentations from totally different type ventures is it clearly shows when one company has invested more time and energy into that and so uh you know i think if those are a lot of those answers that you would have to have anyway if as, as far as through the permitting and and, and the power and the water and the discharge and and different things like Commissioner Peach and again I know he's not only available to you but to any company that would would prudently uh, expect to go after that and there may not even be another one uh, but I think I I would just encourage you don't you know wait for necessarily that process but you could probably answer a lot of those and, and again from from the short time of one year I served on the TDC I think that this would be uh, terrific I think it would be welcomed by many people we just want to make sure we go through that process and, uh, and and hear it and I think you can appreciate that and, and I appreciate you bringing it forward um, at that time I would I would ask if there's anybody that that wanted to to make a motion on this item uh, I'll make a motion that we go through the correct process the uh, RFP process and uh, Certainly, I feel the same. You know, I, I use these machines too, but we need to we need to cover all the bases. You want to make that without objection? Or? I'll second that. Okay. Uh, and I'll do it without objection. 
We hear any objection uh, to the motion, which would just uh, uh, ask staff to initiate a uh, regular 30-day RFQ process. And, and again, we, we welcome you to provide for that. And so, uh, please, I just don't want you thinking that we don't appreciate your, your interest in it. All right, hearing no objection, uh, that motion is approved. Thank you so much for coming today. Thank you for, for trying to Thank provide a service. Thanks. All right, have a great day. Item number three is a uh, Marine Advisory Committee appointment, and I will uh, turn it over to Commissioner Peach. I believe this is uh, an item added on per his request. Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman, thank you. Uh, just real quickly, um, the current District 4 uh, representative of the Marine Advisory Board, uh, I reached out to her just to introduce myself, and, and unfortunately, um, she won't be able to serve any longer on the board. Fortunately, she found a job that she's uh, very excited about, but it'll take all her time. So she has uh, respectfully uh, resigned her position. Um, I had been talking to some folks, and I have an individual um, that comes highly recommended by a lot of folks, um, boaters down on the south end. His name is Andrew uh, Ruth Roth, goes by Drew. Uh, he's an active duty member flying U-28s. Uh, him and his wife that lived in the area, Holly by the Sea, they're building a home out on the beach on Alabama Street. He's uh, an avid boater, and, and he's very excited to, to help serve the community. So I would like to uh, propose that... Uh, Mr. Ruthroff be appointed as the District 4 advisor to the Marine Advisory Board um, without objection. All right, hearing that, do we have any commissioners or any members of the public that would have any objection to this? Hearing none, uh, that motion is approved. And Commissioner Peach, thank you for, for going out there and bringing forward a good candidate. And I look forward to seeing uh, Mr. Uh, I'm just going to say Drew, so I don't butcher that last name. I look forward to uh, him serving the community. So thank you for that. Item number four is the meeting list for the April meetings as published in the backup. Uh, this time I would ask if there are any commissioners or citizens that have any comments on the meeting list. Commissioner Salter. Mr. Chairman, <clears throat> I'd like to see uh, more advertisement on the April 15th and the April 20th. Is that 22nd? 23rd, I think. It's that Tuesday. Okay. And the 23rd is going to be up. at the Tiger Point Community Center? Uh, yes, sir. Just for, for clarification, the 15th, um, April 15th, will be the one at Woodbine Church, formerly Woodbine Methodist Church, and April 23rd. The 15th is a Monday, and the 23rd is a Tuesday. will be at the Tiger Point Community Center. The Woodbine Church you're talking about, is that the, the big Methodist church there? Yeah. I, Woodbine Church just don't sound right when you've been calling it Woodbine Methodist Church for... Uh, all these years, but yes, sir, it's the one up there, uh, sort of close to Stonebrook yeah. um, on the east side of the road. Okay, thank you. You would like to add those, make sure those are added to the public yes. notice of the meeting list? All right. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Uh, since neither one of these dates were run by the rest of the board, was this just a, a workshop that you're holding, or is it a whole board workshop? I, uh, the, I would say sort of the 15th. Um, was kind of worked through for with me and staff figuring that was uh for for lack of a better term that me and uh, commissioner salter would sort of host them uh in in our area and then on the 23rd i believe that is something that staff worked with with commissioner uh peach and lynchard about looking for a venue um I'm not trying to what leave you. Trying, I'm not, I'm not trying, trying to trying leave to you out of yeah. the trio. The hey. best, the best thing is, is we have uh, relieved you from making any tough decisions on the dates on this. So, but uh, this is something that <laughs> I think. Um, yeah, you know the adage. A lot of folks think we have all the meetings in Milton, or the majority of them. And I, and I really, uh, clearly, I can tell you, I know my heart behind when I went to staff about the 15th meeting was uh, to provide the citizens the 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 effort of us taking the meeting to them and so I'm excited to that but um these are as we discussed Monday about the what we've done with the yeah so um so I think you can get with Dan and Mark offline and they'll they'll share with you some more ideas about what they're looking to do but I believe this will be a a uh, very thorough and objective presentation of not only things we've done also some some budget items like Dan had mentioned that that are needed uh, some options on revenue sources and then I believe we'll we'll have an opportunity to have some 
some one-on-one -on -one dialogue and uh, sort of meet and mingle with some of the citizens as well and uh, really more of an informal type meeting uh, from the concept of less us on the podium and 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 uh, folks coming up and and more of a chance to provide objective opinions and uh, then have some some personal discussions with folks but we are planning on it being a sunshine compliant meeting with notice and with the uh, staff taking minutes so we'll uh, it'll be a sunshine so if, if if all or some of the commissioners want to be there it'll be appropriate for you to do so yeah we, we definitely plan and we know it's not mandatory but we we are hopeful that we will all be able to attend both of them and we and we do love you that's why we come to your <laughs> district every month and have meetings so uh golly you make me feel bad but i, I would just ask that staff I tried <laughs> uh add those two things to our our published a, a meeting list and i'll go ahead and move this meeting list uh for approval before we get in any more trouble thank you so much and uh <laughs> the last item i will defer to roger for the uh, miracle league park add-on thank you mr chairman good morning members <coughs> of the board uh item number one on the engineer report is a discussion of the miracle league park at tiger point uh this is an ada accessibility and a fee proposal from uh, Baskerville Donovan. Uh, as the board knows, we, uh, we have a proposed field under construction for the Miracle League uh, to provide a safe and organized baseball field for the mentally and physically challenged members of our community and foster an environment in Santa Rosa County that enriches the lives of each Miracle League member. Uh, during a routine construction quality control and inspection by Baskerville Donovan, it was noted that some of the pathways and, and, and sidewalks leading to the ball field uh, appear not to be ADA compatible. Uh, Basketball Donovan has proposed to provide uh, uh, the design, uh, demolition plan, sidewalk replacement plan, general details for the construction, and assist us in the front end documents at no cost to the county. Uh, they've agreed to donate their uh, services in kind and staff recommends approval of the in-kind fee proposal from BDI in the amount of $5,500. Uh, this amount will bring their donation, in-kind donation, to $25,500 for the Miracle League Park. And so we recommend approval. Thank you, Roger. Do any members of the public or commissioners have any objection to approving uh, this? And again, I'll, I will echo what Roger said. This is a, uh, they've been working diligently with us on this project. This is an in-kind proposal. So even though it states uh, what the fee would normally have been, this will be at no cost to the citizens of Santa Rosa County. Commissioner Cole. Mr. Chairman, I'd not really have any, of course, of course, no objection, but just I think we ought to, I just wanted to say thank you for to Baskerville Donovan uh, and not just them but there's several engineering groups that have been uh, very uh, involved in our county and I just want to thank all of them uh, for for all the things that they do like this and uh, you know they should certainly are community partners so. absolutely and I, and I think you uh, you spoke for the rest of the board when you say that we're extremely appreciative all right, hearing no further comment, we will approve that item. Uh, that concludes all the committee reports. Uh, we now will open the public forum. Do we have any members of the public uh, here to speak today? Um, all right, we will go ahead and conclude public forum and adjourn the meeting. Again, thank you for attending and thank you for watching online.